Hey, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our conversation is now turning to uh, women and politics. Lawmakers in Nigeria are sponsoring a bill to increase the participation of women in politics, especially to have at least one female senator in each state of the country. And to discuss this, we've invited uh, Mary Okoko, a women's rights activist, and as well as uh, Dr. Abiola Kyode, civil rights activist. Good morning to you both thanks for joining us uh, good morning thanks for it's having me all right. So at uh, the House of Reps, uh, we saw one of the senators, uh, one of the House of Reps uh, members. Uh, her, her name is Taiwo Ulukemi Oluga. She said that it's unacceptable for there to be, uh, for women to constitute only 20 out of the 469 seats, you know, of both chambers of the National Assembly. So, uh, Mrs. Ikoku, I want to begin with you. I want you to give us a sense of, you know, what the statistics are saying regarding women participation in politics in Nigeria. Well, the statistics are quite there. They are out there, very abysmally low. Um, we have right now in the ninth Senate, I think we have just about um, um, eight or nine senators. I'm not sure they're up to, to, to ten. It's nine senators. I rest somewhere, the House of Reps, they're like um, 12. And when you're having that number out of um, 360, it is crazy. It is annoying. And those are the kind of figures we shouldn't be throwing up in a country as largely populated as uh, Nigeria with the over 200 million uh, people. And out of these 200 million, um, women make more than 50% of this population. So it does appear that Nigeria is a country with this huge population and potential of a, a particular group of people, but they've just refused to utilize the, the, the potential, the talents, and the competencies of this percent of her population. This is very, very, um, it, it is something that actually impedes on Nigeria's development because they are not getting in people who should work to ensure that policies that are targeted at human beings, families and children, husbands, men, women, are on the decision-making table. So if you have eight senators out of 360 or nine or 10, what that means is that you just have about eight people representing 100 million population. And in that context, they can be able to make laws and uh, be able to lobby enough to, to, get, to get the kind of policy decisions that they want for everybody in the country. So it impedes progress somehow. If you, it, it, okay. so, so when we talk about this issue, it's not about just bringing women. It's about for what it means for the country, for the development that it brings to the nation. So let's look at it holistically and see how we can increase that number. Women's political participation, the number is abysmally low and we need an uptick in the number. So what the Senate, what um, the Ninth Assembly is doing now is a welcome development. I've been starting with one senator per state. In my state, there are three uh, senatorial districts. So if you just automatically give one senatorial district as a woman, that is that would increase the number. Uh, okay. but. We should push for more, but this is a welcome development. So okay. I would rest now and let's take the next question. I mean, statistically, uh, we are, it's low. Okay. Uh, Dr. Akiode, you're a civil rights activist, and you just heard your colleague mention that, you know, all the potentials and talents that women come with and how that's so grossly underutilized because of our society. I want you to, uh, you know, take us back to history and uh, you know, analyze our society generally in Nigeria, Africa, and even globally to help us understand why this situation is what it is, where women are so you know, underrepresented in politics. Okay, great. So there are potpourri of issues, challenges, situations, and array of things that could result to why we have this low representation of women. And I mean, it's not just a Nigerian thing. I think even the continent, apart from Rwanda and a few other countries that have 
you know, uh, have intentionally worked towards making sure that there is some kind of level, reasonable level of inclusion of women in, in those countries. The, the, the world, really, generally, are also struggling with this issue of women political, women's political inclusion. The, the, in Nigeria, in Nigeria particularly, I can say that there are portfolio of reasons why you don't have so many women there. One big one elephant in the room is culture. So you have this culture that naturally where men feel they are superior, they should be, they are the superior ones, should have power, should be seen, should be the ones running the affairs of the state. While the women are the, the lesser of powerful, have little power and not as strong, shouldn't be holding power, shouldn't be seen, should be seen and not be heard, should not make policies for them. So these are unwritten culture that are there. These are cultural attitudes that also impedes on the progress of women political participation. So when even within the women folks, when you, when you are talking about a woman going into politics, that culture is what rears its head up. When even a woman says, ah, can't you just be like a woman? Why are you trying to behave like a man? You want to go into politics? Politics is dead to you. Look, politics, uh, and they say politics, there's so much violence. A woman cannot uh, do that play in this, in this murky water. The truth is that that is what culture tells you. And that is how people have been culturized and um, socialized. So it impedes on that progress. So what you have, you need to let people know there will be a lot of mindset shifting to address that, that cultural issue. There are these certain traditional cultural attitudes. Uh, women need to know that if there are uh, violence in politics, the violence is meted at everybody, male and female. So it should not be a reason not to go there. Some of that culture will say, oh, the politics also happens some wee hours, ungodly hours of the night. Decent women shouldn't be seen at certain places. Even decent men shouldn't also be seen at certain places. So society naturally has this different level of expectation from women when it comes to decency. So the standards for women are higher. While for the men is lower, you can you can go behave anyhow. So we need to close that kind of gap and uh, treat everybody as equal human beings that are also empowered and prepared, have the innate ability to run for office, win elections, be voted for as well. All we right. cannot seem to have to... a true democracy in a in a democracy that naturally excludes a, 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 a group that make up half of its population. That's no, that's not a democracy. Another reason is financial inclusion. Women do not have access to funds. Politics is a game that really, no matter how you look at it, it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of stamina. You need to build political watches. So you have women put in a disadvantaged position from day one. Mary, you Mary, see, kindly hold on. Woman, uh, I, I know that there's a lot, you know, that, you know, you, you want to pour out, you know, and we, of course, so we're definitely going to bring up the barriers, the financial barriers, the cultural barriers and all of that. But uh, I, I want us to, of course, go back and, of course, still speak a little more on uh, this bill and the possibilities of it going through. I'm going to bring back Dr. Abiola Akiode. Uh, can you hear us uh, clearly now? If you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can. All right. So I, I want to ask about right. the current bill that has been, uh, that we're speaking about this morning. In 2016, there was the Gender and Equalities Bill that was rejected by the same Nigerian you know, House of Assembly, um, because, mostly right. because of the same cultural, uh, cultural okay. reason that we are, we are speaking about now. So I, I want your thoughts on, you know, if, if that also is a sign that this one very likely might not make it far um, um, as a bill. Um, well, um, I, I think that um, it's a good step, you know, that the uh, National Assembly uh, is considering that and it's coming from the chair of the uh, Women in Parliament, which is Honorable Olu Koga, because that's supposed to be, Olu Shoga, that's supposed to be uh, the work that she's supposed to do to drive uh, such transformative changes, you know, within, you know, the uh, political terrain. Um, 
yes, it's a motion that's coming as a motion, and she's uh, bringing in a bill, which she said it's already, I think, um, on the uh, enforced reading. I know that it's a need for a lot of lobbying, you know, given the fact that um, with what we have in the country presently, there are just 3% women in the House of Rep. She is in the House of Rep, she's not in the Senate. Uh, at the Senate level, uh, there are about 6.7% um, of women. Um, so it's a good thing uh, in, in the right direction, especially because it's also coming from within. So they know who are the allies, they know who are the people that they need to uh, do more, you know, to convince within the parliament. And it's also good that yesterday, uh, the Senate president also on his Twitter handle, also uh, made some positive declaration in terms of his readiness to be able to address gender equality, you know, within the country. So I think that these are good moments that we can uh, latch on. And as we all know, the constitutional uh, review is also going on. This constitutional review process is also going on. Uh, the electoral reform is going on. So it gives an opportunity for us to gather all this stuff together to push for what they have in a place like Uganda, where their uh, uh, constitution uh, had provision, you know, promoting gender equality, talking about quota in Rwanda and yeah. other places. Yeah, so in terms of gender Dr. equality, to be, uh, we have been holding meetings. Uh, one of the things is that people are negotiating some of the language of that bill, you know, so that the bill, when it comes back to public hearing, it will be acceptable, you know, to more people. There are a lot of work going on. Uh, Senator Rujimi is still holding forth, and women organizations are still working with them, you know, to see that when it comes back, you know, uh, to uh, the uh, house, it will have probably a softer landing. Uh, yeah. than what's happened the other time. And uh, we, we appreciate all the work that is being done. You know, what, what I'm asking really about is the possibilities that this will go through. Um, and of course, I, I, had re I referred to the 2016 Gender and Equalities Bill that, um, amongst other things, um, asks that we, we stick with what the Constitution says, that there should be a 35% uh, female representation in governance and in politics, which... It doesn't seem like the Nigerian government has remembered in the longest while. Um, that bill was rejected once, you know, um, in 2016. So now a couple of years later, there's a, another bill that is similar. Uh, the persons in the House haven't really changed much. So do you think that it might or it still stands a chance of being passed? Well, um, the, the chance of being passed seems to be very slim, you know, but we would not... Uh, because of that, uh, not advocate for it. Um, you know, at times, also about the we have learned a lot, also as uh, women organization, as women in parliament. You know, about how to negotiate our rights. So I, I think it just wants to be also much more strategic and also make it also like um, uh, uh, a, a tool for uh, supporting people for election. You know, so we can also come up with new strategy. Women go out to vote and they vote people, so meaning that they can also define who would come to the National Assembly and who will not come to the National Assembly. I think that it's actually time for us to begin to wield that power, you know, of women coming out to vote and use that as a negotiating tool. The not too, too young to run bill. When it started the other time, people felt that it would not work. People felt that they would not be able to get that. But at the end of the day, you know, they were able to uh, get that. So I think that we would just keep pushing and trying as much as possible to identify our allies, to identify other people, negotiate with them, go to their constituency, mobilize women in their constituency to speak to them that the time has come for Nigeria to be to put itself in the rightful place uh, in the in the world map of okay. uh, a country that's supportive of gender equality. And just like Mary said, uh, it, it's smart economics, you know, to ensure that you have enough women, you know, in 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 uh, representing your country at different level, you know, uh, would further better the growth and development of the nation. And I think okay. that that is the issue. So the negotiation is just be not because we want a dash as. Uh, as women, but rather we're saying that it is constitutionally right because the constitution allows for non-discrimination. So women should not continue to be discriminated against. Okay. You know, That's uh, in the country. Th thank you. Um, Mrs. Ikoko, do we still have you? Yes. Oh, okay. So just in 30 seconds, I want you to talk about the, this very important issue. So assuming all goes well, this bill is passed and the law requires, you know, that for there to be one woman you know, representative in each state in politics. But let's talk about filling that gap now. How do we begin to mentor and nurture women for political positions and political office? Great. So that's, that's actually an interesting question. 
So um, I think a lot needs to be done in that area to prepare women to run for office and win elections. Because right now, what we have, we are actually, all thanks to people like uh, Stella Odua, uh, Kironye Georgia, uh, the, the, the senators, the House of Rep members, and all of this, uh, Olu Jimi, uh, Remy Tinubu, all these women that have run elections and they are in the House of Representatives and the Senate and in other levels of government. We appreciate the fact that they could step forward to run and win. It's the first place because these are people who inspire the next woman to run. Next step now is you have Agenda 35 that Elector has is, uh, had just uh, campaigned, they've just started. Those are kind of things that needs to happen. And our own parts at the Emerge Women, we've been training women political, uh, part women politicians, even those who have never run an election before. We've been building their skills. We've been turbocharging them to get them ready for election years. Okay. Right. These are things that need to happen. What C is there, you know, organizing different women at different levels. So they are happening. We are not short of women who are ready to run for office. Mm. We are not short of women who are competent to run for elections. We are not short of women who have capacity. We are not short of women. And I'm saying across different sectors in Nigeria, across political regions, applause, across All political right. zones, Ms. and, Ms. and across tri tribes and turns, you have women with character, women okay. with competence, women with capacity. And they are all ready, they Absolutely. are prepared to run for office, and they will win elections. Thank you very but much. we have Thank to create that much, enabling Mrs. environment for women to be part of the decision. All right, women are ready to run. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mary Ikoku and uh, Dr. Uh, Abiola Akiode uh, for your time on The Breakfast this morning. Always a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. Us. And a uh, great way to wrap up the program this morning and mm -hmm. to wrap up the program for the week, actually. Yes. Um, let our final thoughts this morning, uh, and of course, the final thoughts on the breakfast this morning, be about women in politics and women in governance. And I hope that you remember it until we, of course, see you again on Monday. Uh, join us, remember, on social media at Plus TV Africa, um, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Same with our YouTube channel. Yes, just to quickly throw this in, let's have more head girl positions in secondary schools. I believe it's you know, these early years that actually form the minds of kids yeah. and, you know, for our leadership. future generation for leadership positions. Yes, thank you very much for watching The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I'm Aneta Felix. And I am Osao Gye Ogbon. Bye-bye.